Good afternoon, everyone. We are super excited to have you today um, here for our afternoon pick me up content specific arts ed PLCs. Um, today we're kicking off the PLCs uh, series with music. So we're really excited to have all of you here. Um, I know Sayward invited everyone to go ahead and say hello and where you're from in the chat. If you, um, I, or, sorry, and we will go ahead and get started with a few housekeeping things here in just a second. Um, my name is Brandon Rader. I am the K-12 Music and Theater Arts Consultant. Uh, my email is there listed for you. It's brandon.rader at dpi.nc.gov. By the way, my last name is Rader. I know it looks like Rotor, but it's one of those weird things. Um, <laughs> but my colleague is Sayward Grindley, and I'll go ahead and let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Sayward Grindley. I am the new dance and visual arts consultant, and I've been here one month now and working closely with Brandon and Lori and um, already loving it, but um, happy to help in any way. Brandon and I are really working as an arts team, so we're trying to make sure that all of the arts educators really feel comfortable reaching out to both of us. So excited to be here and learn from all of you fantastic educators. And we are led by the fearless section chief, Dr. Lori Major Carlin, and she was going to say hey for a second. Hello, everyone, and uh, I hope you're having a nice afternoon. Thank you so much to Brandon and Sayward for organizing this um, pick me up opportunity for fellowship and conversation. Uh, I know. Just like us, there are, you guys are wondering uh, about a lot of things about the fall, and um, we hope that this will be an opportunity to come together with some suggestions and um, some opportunities to share ideas for um, what things look like moving forward. So thank you all so much for taking the time to join us, and um, I'm really thrilled that Brandon and Sayward are here today to lead you through this process. And we are also joined by um, the NCMEA president. Um, that's the North Carolina Music Educators Association for anybody who might not know. And I'll let Carol go ahead and introduce herself. I can't find you. Are you muted? You are muted. I'll unmute you. There you go. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm Carol Earnhardt. I live in Winston-Salem and I teach at a high school in the Winston-Salem for South County School District. I've been there for 25 years um, at Glen High School. And like Brandon said, I'm also the president of the North Carolina Music Educators Association. And um, between the, or uh, all of us, we are going to help facilitate some breakout rooms today so that all 64 of us won't be trying to talk over the top of each other. From our previous um, PLCs that were hosted um, by NC Learners Together, we realized that we sort of had more of a need to, to break out into smaller groups in order to facilitate deep and meaningful conversations. So thank you very much. Um, Elizabeth, I love that you, you grabbed a mug. That's fantastic. Cheers. <laughs> um, just a few housekeeping things. Uh, we are facilitating this conversation and we've got some ideas, but we're not really mandating or telling you anything uh, beyond that. Unfortunately, we don't have any inside information about whether we're going to be on plan A, B or C next year. So if that's why you're here, I'm sorry, but we will be talking about some different scenarios in case we are in plans A, B or C. Um, if you have your video on, that's awesome. We love to see everybody. It's much better than talking to the wall behind my computer, but um, it's not necessary if you feel unready for a video. Uh, we just want to stay on topic, which is sort of solutions focused. Um, we all know that this is a terrible situation and, and an, a challenging and unprecedented time. So we really want to use our one hour that we have together um, looking for solutions. And if you have any questions, um, as I'm trying to zoom through the, the sort of presentation section, please feel free to use the chat for that. Um, Sayward is going to be manning that and, and she'll let me know. She can cut me off and, and let me know the things that we uh, need to address right away. And then the sort of things that we'll have time for question and answers later. 
Um, oh, I totally forgot about closed captioning. I got to turn that on. See? Oh, I don't know if I can now. I can't. All right. Well, we are in a brand new um, video conferencing tool, which is Cisco WebEx, and we are trying to learn it all. And so if we have some bumps along the way, I greatly apologize. Um, but we are just like everything in the last, you know, five months, we are building the plane as we fly it. So thank you for being patient with us. I just want to point out this bit.ly link down at the bottom, uh, bit.ly slash 2xlcszk. That is the link to this um, slide deck. I think Sayward can go ahead and drop that into the um, chat for anybody who wants to follow along. And um, we are going to be taking notes in our PLCs to go ahead and um, share that out at the very end. Those notes will be kept in at the end of this uh, slide deck as well for your future reference. So, all right. Um, like I said, a brand new webinar interface. So this is this is the new one that we will be using um, for the foreseeable the foreseeable future. I really like uh, the fact that it feels a little bit more intuitive than GoToMeeting was. So you should have these um, buttons across your chin area and um, and they are mute video, sharing screen, um, looking at the participant list, the chat, and then the three dots are kind of the, the other optional things that you have. And the X will allow you to leave the meeting. So um you can ask to annotate uh, the screen um which is which is a very cool feature that we are uh hoping to be able to play with later but we will not be using it today so uh do let us know if you have any questions about the um the interface in the chat and sayward will do her best to find you an answer all right so uh in uh, uh trying to explore more of the functionalities, we're gonna do um, a quick activity that um, is, is gonna help us try to learn this interface a little better. This is a music challenge. I know we can't do an icebreaker like we normally would in a PLC, so this is our, our stab at an icebreaker. Um, Argentine artist Pablo Lovato has, is this amazing visual artist, but he paints a lot of pop and rock musicians. So um, as soon as we say go, I want you to find the chat and then type in the letter like A, B, C, or D, and then who you think it is. And we'll go for about 60 seconds, and then we're going to try out some other functionality of WebEx as well. So on your mark, get set, go. Everybody got Elvis right away. Nice job. James Brown, Madonna, David Bowie, Beatles, Boy George, Bob Dylan, Buble, Rolling Stones. Wow, it's flying through. <laughs> Give you guys about 30 seconds. I want to meet whoever wrote me as D. That's pretty fantastic. All right, we got about 10 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so um, here are your answers and I want you just to, to check and we'll do it totally self honesty. Um, count up just on your own. How many, how many you got right? You don't have to report out yet. We're going to try a different, different function. Hopefully, I can find it.
See, I know that I'm supposed to be able to push a poll out to everybody. Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. All right. I am opening this poll and it asks two questions. The first one is how many did you get correct? And the second one is who is in the room? So um, what, what content areas do you teach? And we've got five people who are already complete. Awesome. All right, we have eight people who are still working on stuff. 39 people who are done. All right. So we'll take just a few more seconds to let anybody who's in progress go ahead and finish their poll. All right. So it says you've got 15 seconds left. That's a cool feature, gives you a countdown. <laughs> All right, I'm going to share these poll results with you. Hopefully you can see them. Do you guys see them? Yes? Oh, awesome. Yeah, yes, we can see them. I don't see them. <laughs> I don't. Um, I think depending on how um, your layout is set up, if you have the chat box open, you should be able to see the polling. If you go down to the bottom and click on your little chat box that looks like a quote. Huh. Gotcha. So I'll, I'll run down just really quick. 2% of us got um, 10 to 12. 25% of us got 7 to 9. 34% of us got um, three to six and a very honest 14% of us got zero to two. So nice job guys. Um, and then 42% of us are general music teachers, 10% are instrumental music teachers, 24 are vocal music teachers, 7% um, are arts coordinators, directors, or some sort of uh, capacity like that. And 7% are other, but we have 22 who did not yet um, answer the uh, answer the question. So that's all right. No, no problem at all. Um, we're going to go ahead and try another, oops, another question here of, of why you're here today. So if you can, um, type in, um, to the poll there, um, what you're hoping to learn today, that'd be great. And you do have to click on the little button that says type your answer here. Thank you very much, Sarah. So for um, people who are, happy, are struggling, yeah. Some people are typing into the chat that the poll is under the chat box. Um, it might be the three dots. There are two different arrows. The chat sidebar and the poll sidebar won't show at the same time. Um, but then someone else said they can see it at the same time. So <laughs> that's OK. No problem. All right, we've got 26 people who have submitted their answers, but we still have about 20 people who are in progress of writing some answers. Um, if you can try to wrap that up, we will go ahead and move forward. And if you simply can't figure it out, if you'd like to type it into the chat, that's fine as well. 
Yes, we'll still see it in the chat, so no worries there. We're thrilled that you are all here today. We really are. And uh, again, thank you so much for your patience in learning this new virtual um, video conferencing system with us. Some things that I'm seeing um, in the chat are uh, to learn ideas and thoughts about starting the next school year, concern about the fall semester and how the arts are affected, to see possibilities of remote instruction, ideas on how to teach on a cart and with limited resources where students cannot share instruments, to learn what has worked for everyone else, how can we sing and teach vocalization for efficiency and results, All right, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll in 20 seconds. It freezes. It won't let me do anything for 20 seconds. It's kind of amazing. All right, three, two, one, zero. All right, now I can share the poll results with you. Um, do you see them? Again, I don't. I only see uh, what I answered. Oh, okay. Well, then here we go. How about that? There we go. Yeah. Now we have some, some results. So um, to learn, to listen to some good ideas for some socialization, that's good too. Um, finding what other, other people are doing, getting ideas for how to handle um, the fall seems to be a pretty um, common theme here. So that's great. Glad. Wow, we've got several new teachers. That's a that's a really, really great thing. So wonderful. Awesome. Well, I hope that um, we will be able to help you with that. So that's wonderful. All right. Today, what we are going to talk about um, is we're going to take a look at some standards and how we might be able to approach our music standards K-12 in a way that complies with plan A, plan B, or plan C. Um, then we're going to go ahead and, um, oh, I'm sorry, first we're going to talk about what that might look like, then we're actually going to look at ideas in part two. Part three is going to be our breakout groups where we'll break out in elementary, instrumental, and vocal sections. And then we will close out um, probably in the last two or three minutes with uh, your survey and instructions on how to get your CEU certificate. So, again, I, I know a lot of people have joined us since the last time I said this. So, please forgive me if I'm being redundant. But if you'd like to follow along um, with our slide deck, this bit.ly at the bottom is uh, the link to the slide deck. So. Um, this whole thing is going to require that we think differently. If you, you have been agonizing over figuring out how you can do exactly what you have always done within the confines of DHHS's regulations, I think that you might give yourself, um, um an unnecessary, uh, Stroke. <laughs> There's no reason to stress yourself out that much. Um, it's it's going to require us to just completely think differently and think beyond outside the box. You know, it's not just in the classroom or online. Um, there's so much that we can do one on one with students over the phone, or even this video conferencing system allows um, you know participants to call in. So if your students if we end up in a scenario where students um, are at home learning, whether it's blended or full time, you can still host phone calls where you can um, reach your students and they don't have to have Internet access. All they need is either a landline or a cell phone. So, um, you know, thinking outside the typical box is something that we do it really well as creatives. And this is a perfect time for us to use that creative power. Um, so, if there are no more MPA or concerts, 
what do you teach that isn't performance? If you can write that in the chat box, that'd be great. And this is all hypothetical. You know, if if you're not teaching to the performance, what else is it that you are teaching? So we see analysis, music history, theory. I like the person who wrote, we teach music. And that's right. I think that's the point is that so much of our, um, so many of our standards talk about so much other than performance, but we tend, especially in six through 12, to really focus on performing or rehearsing for performance. Um, but it requires so many listening skills, analysis skills, um, and contextual relevancy for students to truly become musicians and not just um, playing music. That's great. You guys know it. I'm preaching to the choir. All right. So, um, you know, any sort of aural analysis of texture, form, genre, tempo, or any of those musical elements um, is is not uh, or does not require your students to be closer than six feet from one another, right? Um, teaching history is something that you can do whether students are in the classroom or at home. Teaching composition is something that they can do at home or in the classroom. Same with any sort of theory or Shankarian um, analysis. Talking about technique, I know a lot of um, orchestra teachers who are doing one on one lessons um, to, to target skills, technique, technical skills that their students need to work on. Um, I know that I had a lot of instruction on how to program a concert. Um, you know, if you if you got three songs, you don't start with the slow song and then do two fast songs, right? Teaching some of that um, is absolutely impossible in this scenario or any of these scenarios. And then all of those listening skills, just broadening our students' horizons, um, is is possible in a in any of those situations. Uh, I just want to bring your attention to this document. The School Board of Education um, released this last week at their uh, board meeting, and it is the Lighting Our Way Forward North Carolina's Guidebook to Reopening Public Schools. Um, if you have had no idea what I'm talking about for Plan A, Plan B, and Plan C, this is the document that will tell you all about it and all of the possible um, things that we might need to consider. Um, if you are able to self mute, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Um, you can go ahead and click on, whoops, you can click on the image here and it will take you to the full document. Um, and I just did want to note something that um, the decision tree for what plan we end up on in the fall is completely dependent on what the governor and DHHS says. Um, there's, there's a whole decision tree that uh, is available to everybody to understand how these decisions are made, um, but it is not up to uh, DPI or to your local school boards yet, um, unless they choose the most stringent sort of um, guidelines. One of the things that was mentioned is that school districts are definitely welcome to choose, um, you know, any any more conservative option for. Um, or more restrictive, excuse me, option, but they can't choose a less restrictive option than DHHS and the governor may. So, um, also, it's, many of you probably were aware that there was a webinar this morning from um, Arts NC. And um, sorry, if everyone can take a minute to mute themselves again, I think we're getting a lot of background noise from somebody. Um, thank you. Uh, Arts NC and the four professional organizations, as well as NCTC, um, worked together to put out a document for, uh, or on their own, separate from DPI, for recommendations uh, for arts education. And a lot of these things um, are sort of common sense to many of us, but um, might be things that have not been considered by our administrators or people who are making decisions. So, um, it is a resource that is available to you, and there is a recording of um, 
that webinar today um, on their website as well that you are welcome to go ahead and go look at. So I know this is what a lot of people have been curious about, um, our content focused ideas. So um, a while back, we posted remote learning ideas on our, our Google site. And uh, if you aren't aware of the Google site, say we will um, drop that into the chat, but you are also able to access it by clicking on this little splat that's on pretty much every, every title page there. Um, if you scroll down here, these remote learning resources are, are available to everyone. And um, you can go ahead and see the standards or you can click on these drop downs. And we are uh, very cognizant of the idea that some districts uh, yes. are going to only be able to do tech. I'm sorry, we've got someone who's unmuted again. Um, and uh, some districts uh, who are blessed yeah, and are able to do high tech. West 34th Street. Um, there are some areas like the creating sections that are, are by content area, but then um, analysis, critique, history, and careers are sort of lumped together because we didn't want to um, redo all of those sections. And then we also uh, included lots and lots of resources from all of our partner organizations. So if you are unaware of this, um, definitely check it out for sure. But we'll go ahead and take a look here. Um, you know, some of the things for creating for low tech, every single person in every house either has access to a piece of Tupperware or a table or the floor or their body, as Sayward pointed out, that they can practice rhythms. Um, you know, they can, hopefully every child has a book in their house that they could create sound effects to or um, be able to create a soundscape with found instruments. Um, and then you can have a whole conversation about found instruments and what kind of uh, compositions have been um, created uh, in that genre as well. You can take that from you know, sound effects in kindergarten all the way through drum cadences that students are using. Exactly, Linda's got it. Um, <laughs> and. Um, rewriting words to familiar songs or going on and using flat.io or Soundtrap, really trying to push the envelope on, on what technology can do. Um, looking at analysis, I guarantee that many students have music in their house that they've never listened to, whether it's grandma's records or her favorite CDs or, you know, songs that grandpa remembers being sung when he was a kid or even parents or siblings that don't necessarily listen to the same thing any sort of broadening of horizons is going to be excellent for our students and um, so many of our standards address any of those um, i also wanted to point out that muse is a television show on pbs and it is all about north carolina artists um, you'll have to pay attention to um, to what's being broadcast that that week, but you can look that up online. So if your students don't have access to the internet, um, they don't have access to YouTube or looking things up, they you could still focus their learning on North Carolina music by watching Muse on PBS. Um, MusicTheory.net has amazing skills and exercises that you can customize. And then of course, the North Carolina Symphony Ed concert um, has been completely put online. So the password is 1932. And if you are not totally aware of this, um, they have put on or taken all of the lessons and um, the teacher's guide is there, but the student reading is also there. There's a video that Wes Schultz, who is the, um, the conductor, he is, uh, talks through a lot of things and um, you basically get the ed concert experience right there. And I know that they generally shoot for elementary, middle school age, but I think that this would be appropriate um, for any sort of, or could be adapted to be made appropriate for any age and any standards. Um, there are also their string quartet and um, their very first instrument video doesn't look like it's been uploaded, yet, but they um, did 
they are planning to do a spotlight on instruments as well. Um, so just to be clear, the difference that I made between analysis and critique, analysis is identifying what there is, but critique is choosing some, or you know, put a, applying some sort of hierarchy to it. So you know, even just the idea of what is good music or what is good for that genre, even if it doesn't float my boat, those are some things that are important conversations for us to talk about with kids because I remember, you know, in all of my ensembles, I have performed songs that I did not enjoy, but I performed them to the best of my ability and I gave it my all because I was part of the ensemble. And some of those um, discussions are good and are important as well. So, um, teaching history, there's so many, so many resources. I just wanted to point out a lot of them from our partners. Um, we did create the Teaching North Carolina Arts Project uh, with the Arts Council. And um, so right now music is the only portion that's completely uh, filled out with lesson plans and resources, but um, dance and art are currently in the works and theater is on the books. But um, the North Carolina Music Hall of Fame and all of the Blue Ridge Music Trails, African American Music Trails, Come Here and See are all projects of the North Carolina Arts Council. The Library of Con Congress has amazing resources um, and even webinars and teacher development about using primary sources, um, which is very cool. Uh, and then the Alan Lomax Collection for folk music uh, of both the United States and the world is, is highly digitized and you can explore that or you can direct students to it to explore it as well. Um, and then sort of another section is health and economics, trying to think about um, what music brings to the state and to the nation as economics is, is a big part of our, our secondary standards, along with what sort of health practices we need to participate in and why we need to do those sorts of things. Um, and no, none of this has anything to do with wearing a face mask. So there are general um, music health sort of guidelines. Um, those sorts of things can be done regardless of which plan we're in as well. Brandon, there's quite a bit going on um, in the chat. So I'm just going to share some other things. And if, if you have um, additional ideas that you want to chime in with, feel free to uh, unmute and share any of those ideas uh, vocally as well. Um, so people are talking about, you know, going to YouTube and looking for genres and then uh, converting YouTube videos to safe tube. So that's been um, highly encouraged by several people um, that they can type that in just to make sure that those are, are, are safely uploaded for students. Um, also, if, a, if students have a parent or friend who plays an instrument, um, or sings in a group, they can interview them about how they got started in learning that instrument or singing. And so really getting to know that person, they could even um, write a paper about that experience in that interview. Um, Susan Gardner puts the link to so safe, to safe YouTube. So that's in there as well. Um, and she says, uh, or somebody else, uh, Friend, she says, take a particular song that has been done in various styles, have students analyze the similarities and differences. Um, when it's been done several several different ways. Um, Christine White posts the uh, timpani um, from Symphony link there, so you have that access. And let's see, the Dallas Orchestra um, has an online game. Um, let's see, which is an introduction to the orchestra. Um, teachrock.org is a great teaching pop music history app. Um, yeah, we actually yeah, use that one a lot. Oops, sorry. We use that one a lot for the Teaching North Carolina Arts Project. The only thing um, I, I want to jump in really fast is just remembering that we're not trying to generate ideas and activities. We are trying to generate standards-driven instruction because, especially, uh, or sorry, regardless of which plan we are create, or we are following in the fall, um, our students are going to be responsible for making sure that they are um, working on the actual standards and we are going to be responsible for teaching our students the standards. So um, let's see, we've got a uh, Smithsonian Folkways. Um, there's a link to that. Um, uh, let's see, 
NIFIL, I don't know how to say that, um, or NYPhil Kid Zone, that's it. Um, a website for several orchestras have virtual tours. And then Susan Gardner also says, uh, I have a lesson about decibel levels, levels and safe listening, applicable, especially now that kids are listening with earbuds, headphones, and et cetera, more than ever. Um, so that sounds like a really exciting lesson there that I'm sure many people would be interested in um, seeing or learning about. And then the Fayetteville Symphony has story time with Arthur that someone says has been amazing as well. That's great. Yeah. The, the other things that I've um, been thinking about are teaching copyright is going to be really important right now and fair use. Um, and then, you know, any sort of ethnography or um, ethnographic sort of uh, reporting of local music is going to be really cool for students as well. So, very cool. All right. Um, so, I, I already spoke a little bit about the North Carolina Symphony. So, I'm going to go ahead and, oh, um, Flipgrid, we actually have Linda Good here um, joining us, but I will go through these really quickly because I know that we want to get to our smaller group PLCs. Um, Flipgrid is basically a discussion board that is um, able to use short videos. I believe it's two minutes or less. And um, these are just some, some ideas of some music ideas that Linda did with her students in Cumberland County. And um, it's, it's a way that students could perform and then get critique or analysis or just simply response, a way that you could build um, as interaction and collegiality between your students. And uh, it's, it would be a great way for students to interact in a virtual environment, but it feels like they can still have a conversation. So. Um, I'm going to kick this over to Carol and let her tell you a little bit about some of the things that NCMEA are doing. Um, well, what Brandon has up on the screen, uh, we are collecting stories from the classroom um, in, and it's called teaching music from classrooms to homes. Uh, we've collected several stories and are still uh, seeking input for uh, for those stories, things that you found successful and um, apparently you guys, you are incredible. You have so many things on the chat list already that I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I never thought of that. Um, another thing that I started with Bethany Jennings, our high school choral chair, simply because a high school chorus teacher called me and said, um, Carol, my administrator wants a curriculum for the fall now. And this was the middle of May. And so uh, I called Bethany and we organized the North Carolina essential standards in groups and shared a Google Doc between us and the teacher who called um, to put lesson plans under each standard, sort of like what Brandon has done uh, with the standards beside the lesson ideas. Um, and my thought was, why re reinvent the wheel? Why not share this across the state? And because you all have such wonderful ideas, it's just that if we can organize them within the standards that we have, um, then teachers can go to their principal and say, this is how I'm covering the standard with remote learning. Um, also, there was a section on Bethany's document that I added for social emotional learning things that you were doing in your classroom since we don't have social emotional learning woven into our standards as of yet. I am encouraging all of the section chairs with the North Carolina Music Educators Association to do the same process, but we've sort of put that on hold right now. We're working on um, revising the recommendations that are in the document with the arts recommendations and also getting some more specifics as far as what will a band classroom look like and plan A, plan B, plan C, what will general music look like in those three plans? Um, so we're working on that now and we'll finish that probably mid-July. And then hopefully once we know more, um, start that document um, spin around North Carolina in, within each section and have you guys putting in lesson plans. Uh, so that can be a great uh, resource that teachers can print out and have on their desk and have something to do. Um, I'm so happy. This is amazing. We have been trying to do this for years and I'm so excited. Sorry. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. I think that in my opinion, and Brandon, I hope I'm not getting in trouble saying this, but um, with ASW, I believe that teachers were really looking towards the standards and um, thinking about those standards. Uh, and, you know, not I'm not saying they are perfect in any way, but uh, we are now, like Brandon said, rethinking our classrooms and I, my room will not look the same in the fall that it did back in the beginning of March. And I just need to accept that fact and maybe look towards the standards to give me ideas about what I can be teaching my students. So. Awesome, thank you very much. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go into our breakout groups. Um, we, oh, sorry because it is, oh man, what is going on? It is time to share. I hope that you enjoy that terrible dad joke. Um, so what we are gonna do is, oh, this is not correct. Let me go ahead and change screens. Um, this is correct here. Instrumental music is going to stay here um, and we will we will have our PLC here. Um, we had a little hiccup with the way we thought we were going to be able to do this, uh, and so like great educators, we pivoted at the last minute. Um, so if you are a, if you are hoping to join the um, general music uh, discussion, you can go to the link that I just dropped into the chat, which is um, say words. Uh, meeting room and then if you are hoping to join the vocal music um, discussion carol is going to host that in the zoom link there that i have dropped into the chat um, we will go ahead and try to make that start at a quarter till um, which is in oh gosh one minute so um if you have any lingering questions about this, please do feel free to email us and um, uh, say word, put that in the chat, but I will make sure to reach out to all of you as well. Um, and then you do have access to the slide deck and we are gonna try to take notes in our breakouts. So if you are here as an administrator or representing a group of teachers um, in multiple areas, you'll be able to go back to those notes um, later on, so. And I am trying to take as much as possible from this chat, any of the links or ideas that you all have shared, and I will um, add that into the slide deck as well so that you have access to that. So at this time, if you would like to um, jump ship and go ahead and go to whatever breakout room you would like to participate in, it was wonderful to have you, and I truly appreciate you participating with us today. And in the breakout rooms is where you'll get your survey to be able to fill out a certificate. So that's where you will get that. Jennifer, I can answer your question very quickly. Um, it won't happen. We are a local control state, which means that we as a Department of Instruction will not in, uh, adopt or uh, endorse any specific vendor. So Quaver um, is something that your uh, local education agency, your school district can purchase, but it is not something that we will be purchasing as a state. All right, I'm gonna head over and join um, and create the general music. So nice to meet you all, thank you. Instrumental music, if you need a humanities break, we can reconvene in just a few minutes. <laughs> You guys don't look like you're getting up. So does that mean we're we're ready to move forward? Thumbs up if you want to just go. Yeah, awesome. I just figured out how to look at more than four people at a time, so that's helpful. <laughs> um, do you guys see my my notes here, um, or do you see yourselves? Go ahead and feel free to unmute yourself. We see your notes. Notes. Beautiful. Awesome. Cool. So. Um, I guess if it's possible um, to turn on your video, that might be helpful um, just 
for the next couple minutes, I was going to ask you a few questions. Um, and so we'll go with, uh, let's go with just like thumbs up if you are banned, thumbs down if you are um, an arts administrator, because I don't want to make, or, and then we'll do an open hand if you are strings or orchestra. <laughs> Andrew, I know I totally called you out. Awesome. Oh, I like the fact that Micah has two. That's great. Fan and orchestra. All right. Great. Okay. So and strings and vocal. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. You are one of those that I was mentioning earlier. The fact that, yeah, you, uh, so in the county that I just came from that I still live in, we only have one full time um, chorus teacher uh, and everybody else is, you know, split. So I totally, I completely understand that. So um, that's great. I am mostly just facilitating this conversation. So I am not, I don't really have much more planned than I already shared with you other than these few notes. Um, I was talking to a friend, Justin Dixon, who is a middle school director in Wake um, County. And he was talking about the fact that, uh, you know, if we are in plan C, every single sixth grade band member is going to learn percussion first. They are all going to learn how to read rhythms, whether it's on their bodies or on a piece of Tupperware or on a table. They are all going to do that. And then they are all going to have a recorder and they are all going to um, learn how to do pitch reading. The, the purpose of the recorder, of course, is, you know, uh, the idea of embouchure and um, pitch reading and being able to do all of those things at the same time. Hopefully they will transfer to well and breath control and so much of that as well. Um, and uh, that's sort of the idea. And he was also talking about the fact that if you're in a blended situation, you could do that as well. Um, you know, if, if students are coming in and out of the classroom, or even if you're in an elementary classroom, if every kid, you know, who is that's developmentally appropriate for um, has their own recorder that's great, you know, then that's something that is theirs, it's their spit, um, and it's something that they can handle, uh, hopefully without flinging spit at anybody else. So um, what are your thoughts? What do you guys want to talk about? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm an orchestra teacher, but I need to get as many ideas for the band because uh, my band director just retired. And the person that comes coming in is probably gonna be like a brand new teacher, maybe with maybe one year experience. So all our all our applicants are newbies. So any ideas you all have about um, about this, like what we just said, I can take because I might wind up being that person's mentor. I don't know. Well, I would uh, like to jump in right here as the NCMEA mentoring program chair that you should direct them to NCMEA mentoring program, and we will hook them up with a mentor, content specific. You know, one thing, one thing that would not be terrible is that a new person isn't going to try to unlearn anything. They, if they don't have, you know, a set way of doing things, and this is the way that they learn to, you know, start things that might not be so much or require so much activation energy to get them to change their mindset. Um, you know, the honest truth is, or we were discussing this morning about marching band competitions. Um, Nobody knows whether or not marching band is going to happen. Not a single person knows because the governor and DHHS are going to make that decision. And even if your LEA says yes, your principal has to approve it. And we don't even know if we can stick kids on a bus to get kids to a marching band competition. Yes, people are posting the fact that there are going to be marching band competitions because we can't wait until the beginning of August to start planning a marching band competition, right? Like people have to assume they have to be hopeful and um, pretend like we're going to have it, like they know we're going to have it and make those plans in case we do have it. Um, but we don't, that, the fact that they exist doesn't mean that any LEA has given the thumbs up for that happening because no one knows yet. So who has great ideas for how to start off the beginning of the school year? And it could be in any of the plans. 
Well, I, I know, you know, as an orchestra teacher, I have the advantage. I'm not worrying about the aerosol spray. So my kids can come in and they can wear a mask and I plan on getting, I have my own mask and I plan on getting a guard. Um, but we do, anyway, I normally do start off the year with note reading and rhythmic stuff anyway. So it might just be a longer session of doing that stuff before we actually get to instrument stuff. But always the concern is going to be uh, having to deal with the parents who are like, well, we paid for an instrument. The kid's supposed to be learning an instrument. That's when my kids sign for class. We want to learn. So I think our challenge is going to be dealing more with the parents than with the kids. Hopefully parents will all be going whatever you say. I don't know. What yeah. They're doing. <laughs> yeah, I always have that happen. Yeah. That's great. I have a comment or a question. Um, I don't know if anyone else um, has this concern where you have students sharing instruments and what your thoughts are about um, how to make that work. Um, I'm a kind of an unusual circumstance. I teach um, group piano at a magnet school for the arts mm -hmm. in Charlotte and um, my students share digital pianos. And so I have um, obvi obviously concerns. Um, the room is not very big, so we're definitely gonna, if we're going to social distance, have to um, you know, reduce class sizes, but also just how do you make sure that everyone is safe or does anyone have any ideas? Well, from this morning, during this morning's meeting that uh, Brandon was at, um, I was thinking to myself during part of that, I'm going to make clean up at the end of class, you know, wipe down and all that part of the lesson. So at the end of at the end of every session, the kids are going to have to wipe down their instrument. That's going to be part of what they have to do. So we have to have like the 10,000 disinfectant wipes around to wipe down the pianos and the stands and the seats and everything. That's going to have, to, I think that's going to be, have to be part of our daily routine now. I mean, I'm going to have to have the kids wipe down their seats. The cello players going to have to wipe off their, their fingerboards and the bows because those are, that's, those are only instruments I have shared right now. But um, that's going to be part of the daily routine to wipe things down as they, before they leave the classroom, just as they pack up their instrument. That's the only thing I can think of. Kristen, the other thing is that you are also in the same sort of case where you aren't necessarily dealing with the aerosols. So if you have students, you know, sanitizing their hands, whether it's with soap or hand sanitizer at the beginning of the lesson and wearing um, a face mask or a face guard or something during the lesson and then having them clean themselves or clean the keyboards and their hands at the end of the lesson, hopefully you can mitigate how much how much aerosol, how much spit has gotten onto the onto the piano. I mean, I won't let my my six year old touch my piano without washing her hands. Um, so um, I'm sure that that's that's sort of the similar thing. Um, hey, Kristen, one of the things you might want to consider is your classroom transition time. Are you teaching the middle school component, or are you completely high school? I teach both. So um, with your middle schoolers, our school district might not say that middle schoolers can wipe down the equipment. They might want an adult to do that. Um, and so you would need to take a good look at your transition times and see if that would be something that's feasible and come up with a plan in your mind for what to do with middle schoolers. High schoolers, I think we could we can we feel more confident in their ability to wipe up after themselves, but just something to be thinking about. Um, another question for folks. Um, so we're all talking about sanitizing and, you know, having gobs and gobs of wipes and things, but where is this material coming from? <laughs> like, who's buying it? Um, you know, I mean, my I have a booster group that um, buys a lot of like Purell wipes. And actually, when I got new instruments a few years ago, we installed like around the room, like um, wall, um, places where the white containers stay so they're there but we're going to go through things so much faster now and i just and also they're just a hard to come by still so i don't know if anyone has talked about this or anyway i want to say from our district level you know that's something that's it's exacerbated in the music classroom but it's something that school districts are having to plan for every classroom and purchase in bulk and spend money on these things. And so you just need to make sure that you're part of that conversation of saying, don't forget, I need this for my classroom too. They're having to make sure those things are accessible to everybody. Um, speaking from my district, I know last year when we had the big flu outbreak, 
they did invest in, in like every teacher got like two containers of wipes and parents were donating. I mean, we're not allowed to ask the parents to give stuff to the classroom, but you're allowed to say, hey, if you're able to, parents, if you have extra and you can donate to the classroom, I mean, you're allowed to ask for donations, you just can't demand donations. You know, so I know I have parents that are constantly giving me things even if I don't ask for it. So I think that the most important thing is to make sure that you're part of a conversation. Don't let yourself get forgotten. Um, Brandon, I wanted to go back to what you were saying about, you know, how can we teach without blowing? <laughs> and I just, for years, I um, was teaching recorder next door to a classroom where they would have testing every nine weeks. God bless so, you. Um, <laughs> so that meant that we had to have a silent lesson on that day. And there's just a lot of um, value to them humming the pitches and moving the fingers. It's not the same. You're not going to teach the embouchure and all those other things that you want to. But you can teach them the fingering on the instruments and they can hum the pitches and audiate the music. Um, to at least get some experience with their instrument in their hands, even though they're not developing the mouth skills yet. Well, and I, I would say that audiation is something that is undervalued in general, especially when or outside of the vocal music classroom. You know, being able to hear a pitch, though, before you play it is ridiculously important and um, helps our students dial in straight to the middle of the pitch center instead of, you know, up or down. Um, so a lot of those things are really important. And just while you were talking about recorder, um, I don't know if if anyone ends up doing recorder. Joytunes has an amazing um, uh, interface that's a flash player that students use the recorder as their remote control, and they blow up birds by playing the right pitch. It's fantastic. I used it in my classroom all the time. I mean, I was a general music teacher and you guys are probably secondary instrument teachers, but it might be something that your sixth graders really, really enjoy if that's the path that you choose. I think that it's important for, um, you know, managing expectations for beginning strings and band that we're going to have about a year where our sixth graders are not doing what we're used to a sixth grader doing and they're not going to have that ability and we're going to have to catch them up middle of seventh grade maybe even eighth grade and for high school teachers like me we need to just go ahead and accept that three years from now we're going to get a class of freshmen that are probably going to be a year behind what we're used to from our freshmen and that's going to have to be okay because that's what we need to do uh, that being said however if our middle school teachers are really honing in on rhythm skills because that's what we're able to do in a, without spitting, um, then we might end up, you know, you might end up in four years with a freshman class that can play the socks off of any rhythm whatsoever, even if their pitch reading is not super or superior, right? So well, yeah, this I, is a great time to work on that rhythm skill. Yeah, I think that we're gonna, we're gonna, the natural, what we consider the natural progression of learning is going to be different for this class, right? So our, we're gonna be focusing on these other standards, these other skills, and, and our students will progress maybe higher in those skills than our students typically do in a year, but they might be behind in these, but that's okay because it will all come out in the wash. Hopefully, right? Um, most of the discussions that I've heard are about this fall. Right and this semester, um, I mean, I I unfortunately can't guess what comes after that, but um, you know, hopefully, in the same way that most of us had the opportunity to use first semester to do performance um, skills with our students, and second semester for these remote learning skills, we can kind of flip it next year, hopefully. So we are after four, so I won't keep you any longer. And um, let's see, I got to make this screen a little bit. Oh, perfect. Okay. So your, let's go ahead and just talk about um, CEUs. You can click on this link for the um, survey that I will drop into the chat. Here we go. And it takes you to, um, a Google form, and then at the very end of that form is a link to your 
um, EU certificate. It is a PDF, and so you'll have to print it out and um, write in your name and your uh, last four of your social security number, or you can figure out how to use Preview or some other program to make a text box over the top of it and type it in and save it as another PDF. Um, if that is giving you a huge headache, please do feel free to email me and I will work with you to come up with something that is more usable for you. Um, and then this is my contact information and Sayward's contact information. And if there's nothing else that you write down, please write down or save the bit.ly link um, so that you can come back to this um, at the at whenever you want and you can share with everybody. And um, are there any lingering questions or anything that I can answer? Thank you. You are very welcome. Thank you for for participating today. I really appreciate it. And um, is this something that you would like to continue to do on like a monthly basis? I'm assuming that we should hear some more news by like the beginning of July. Um, so in a month, I'm thinking we might have a clearer idea or middle of July might have a little bit clearer of an idea of where we're headed. Oh, that would be definitely be helpful in a month. I would love to do it. It just has to be later because I go back, I start working in the summer again. So three o'clock won't work. <laughs> well, if if you're unable to participate, we are recording the session and oh, okay. I will, I will um, make sure that that gets out to everybody. All right. So still still register for the session, even if you're not able to do it so that you're on my list. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. If you have no more questions, um, you are free to go. And uh, I'll hang back just for a couple minutes to see if anybody has any one-on-one uh, -on -one questions. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Have, have a great afternoon. That's my 10-month-old, in case anyone was wondering. It's, it sounds like normal to me, so. Yeah, only th the thing I, I probably need, I, one thing probably I think some of us need help with is dealing, trying to help the kids deal with what we're dealing with at the same time that we're trying to deal with it. Because I got kids who've been, they've been doing great things performing wise, and now they're like stuck because they don't feel like having anything to perform. So more of the social social part of the, 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 the plan that we're taking. So trying to, so any kind of references we have might be good for the next session. Do you have, I love that idea. Um, are you aware of the fact that we are rolling out um, SEL core competencies as a whole state? I saw something, but I didn't get all the details on it. I did, last yeah. week or last month, I saw something, so. Yeah, so um, the details are slowly leaking out, not leaking, trickling out. <laughs> um, and uh, actually, last night, Sayward and I submitted all four document guidance documents for all four arts areas to the um the SEL leadership team and so they should be vetted um in the next couple of weeks and hopefully they'll be pushed out to the field by the middle of July um I will say that we so we knew this was coming and we are um a, planning to package most of our PD in this upcoming year in in SEL language um so that because we know that's that's the biggest need. Like we can we can teach our kids in any format, but we need to meet their SEL needs too. You know, we've got a Maslow before they can bloom. <laughs> so wonderful. All right, thanks again. Thank you. Have a good one. Hey Brandon, thanks for putting this together. It's really nice. It's a good thing. I think it's going to bring you know teachers closer together. I know these PLCs have been an inc incredible resource in our district in Charlotte, Mac. So wonderful. Just, just thank you. Yeah. Um, but you know, just continue doing what you're doing. You're doing great things. Thank you very much. Have a good one. You too. Bye.